how to transition patterns when playing live. Uh, the long and short of it is, I have done videos on this topic before, but the setup has changed. There's new ways of doing things, so I guess that that's why we're watching this video today. And let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet this video. Now, if this is your first time here, don't hesitate to click subscribe, hit that notification bell, because whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you will not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about Patreon, Discord, the connection, the community. It's cool. On this topic, now, a DJ, when in the club, mixes two records together. That means he transitions the records from A to B. There's one CD player or a turntable, and there's the mixer, then there's another CD player or a mixer. So he or she would now listen to the track you're not hearing on the headphone, on the preface listening. With the pitch control, they pretty much align the two tempos together, and then when everything is ready, you'll hear a new record flow seamlessly into the room, which means a good DJ will make sure it goes very smoothly, you'll feel a little bit of adrenaline and you'll be dancing a little bit more. A bad DJ will make you wonder, do you need another leg or do you need to cut off the one you're standing on? It's that simple. However, when taking a trip into Dollar's land, it means all of a sudden you are not playing records, you are the record. So you need to transition. How does this work? Pretty much when using step sequencers, it means you're going from one place to the next. Bam, bam, bam. Very simple. But the simplicity in how to make music also comes up with a new problem. Because now to seamlessly go from one pattern to another when switching keys or switching tracks can come up with a bit of a problematic situation. Is there a way to do it? Yes, there is. I'm so glad you asked. There is a way to do it. It means you have to look at the different band members within your band and how to structure them accordingly. Which means if something is playing bass or something is doing drums, can you just make sure that something is already just like sneaking into the next pattern or at least making it so that it, it feels like you're already migrating to another pattern. Not everything needs to move at the same time. Now, I've set my setup in such a way that back in the days, I used to have a neat trick where the Octatrack got a CC message, a control message from the MPC saying you need to switch now. The long and short of it is that if certain brands are not like the same, it means the MIDI CC messages will get there late, which is funny because with sequencers it's different than with synthesizers. If you are playing preset number one on this pattern and you go to the next pattern and you play preset number two, most likely your synthesizer will instantly jump and switch to that next sound. Not so much if you're using a sequencer. For some reason it gets the program change message on the first of the bar. So the one sequence is already there and the other one needs to just like tag along. In case of the Octatrack, if you set it to four bars, it means 64 steps of waiting and then it jumps over. So that was a neat trick that I did. There's videos on my channel on how to make that work. I'll link a link in the description below. However, today my setup is different. I've got my band members to do different tasks. I want them to do something else. Why? Because I don't want to be relying on one thing breaking down and then talking along the other one with them. So it is a different situation. I have set up my electronic band, my electronic orchestra, my band members in such a way that I can do different tasks. It sounds like it's the same thing, but at the same time it's not. So I will mask my CIA kind of switching into the new pattern uh, and uh, explain it to you on how I do that. There is a jam towards the end of this video as well, so you can see how I come up with my stuff to so actually see me do this stuff a little bit live, because I do talk a lot about this stuff, but you know, I think the performing aspect of it is also very important. So today, let's see if that works out as well. If you're ready, I guess you are. Let's go to the live set. Let's see if we can make it work. You ready? Let's go. 
The live set consists of the subsequent 37, it consists of a long control XL controls, it consists of a multi clock mini tower, there's an octa track here, there's an MPC1 here, there's an OB6 here, then there's a DM12 mixer here. What you cannot see is the API launch box, which is over here. Underneath, I've got a Neve 1073 uh, microphone preamp that I've built myself, but there's line level inputs that I'm using. So the whole mixer goes through that uh, 1073 and then goes out to the speakers usually or to the front of room. Um, there is uh, the API launch box with a 525 and a 550B, which is controlling the kick drum. So I've got separate uh, control over the kick drum, which is like going out. It's first it's going into the launch box and then it's coming back to the desk and then the bowl stereo goes through the 1073 mixer. Um, how have I set this up in terms of working the transition? The magical transition as a DJ would be that something plays uh, and then something gets mixed in. When you're doing this with a dollar setup, now you are faced with having to jump from one song to another song, which sometimes works, but sometimes it doesn't work. Today, however, the approach of transitioning is different because the most important thing here for me is the multi-clock. Now, the multi-clock is a machine that a lot of people are, um, yeah, you know, they've got an opinion about it because it's not the cheapest machine that there is and it doesn't make any sound. Now, I've seen in the dollars realm that if you have to spend about six, seven hundred dollars or euros on, the, on a piece of equipment that doesn't make any noise, problems, problems arise. However, this machine does what I love um, a machine to do, it keeps everything in sync. If you have, if you're having to deal with MIDI for some reason, <clears throat> I don't know how this old and um, in my humble opinion, proven structure still fluctuates with different manufacturers. It's crazy. So usually it works that MIDI goes out, in, out, in, and you make a MIDI chain, which means that if you make a long enough MIDI chain, or your cables are too long, you'll introduce MIDI lag, MIDI delay. Not very cool if you're trying to make a track with different um, uh, band members within um, your electronic orchestra and everything needs to just run in time. It is very important that things start on the beat. So with this multi-clock now, you have four channels of, um, yeah, of triggers, of MIDI signals that you can send. And I'm only using two for the two different pieces in my um, electronic orchestra. Now, there's one machine dedicated to drums. That's the Octatrack. Octatrack drums. Plays this. We'll get to that. The MPC-1 plays MIDI information of the OB-6, of the subsequent and of the Minitar. And it does a few tricks with some sounds that are coming from the Akai as well. So there's a lot of options here. My mind works like this. This is my first deck. This is my second deck. I just approach it as a DJ would. Um, so these things are now only connected via the multi-clock or not even connected. They're getting their signal from the multi-clock, which means if I'm starting this, let's uh, lower the... See, this is the kick drum coming from the uh, Octatrack. So now you only have kick. Yeah, and then the stereo output of the Octatrack is here. So, right, and if I were to start my MPC-1, I'll go to this, and you'll see the one, two, three, four, well, now we'll start it, and it goes like. Nice. So this is the subsequent that you can hear. Let's get out of the uh, next sequence page. We go over to the channels that I've set up here. Um, let's take this off. This is a track that I've been working on. I mean, if you follow this video, you have heard me um, play this before. Track one on the MPC one is the Minitar. So that's Mini. Track two is the subsequent. That's over here. So if I was to fiddle about with the filter, I am making sure that I'm on this filter page as well. As you can hear, track three is the OB6. The green phase is over here, OB6. Mm -hmm. 
Getting to that in a second. So, obviously, with the beat. So now I've got control over whatever. This works because if there's somebody that has their own setup, I can now decide if I want to have track three or four go to them. And then if I'm starting this, they will be playing with me in time. What a cool thing is, is that there is pitch like a, a CDJ uh, mixer. There is pitch, so I can now pitch my machines. Listen to how off the bass drum is going to be. Now, if you know MIDI, you know that if you just wait long enough, at some point a machine will get warmer, something will happen internally, and sometimes it doesn't really want to follow the beat. So it's cool to have control over what plays what. Not in the last part, I'm using old school gear, not today so much, but I've got a 909, I've got a SH-101, as this thing sends out DIN sync, sends out a trigger signal, so you can imagine that if you're working with different pieces of kit coming out of different eras, then the MIDI is going to be different. This is pretty much all chip based, or there's something internally that calculates it for you in this day and age, but if you get it into SH-101 or um, uh, TR-909, 606, or 808 territory, then it's circuitry that determines the speed and the sync, which means it can be unpredictable. A little bit of tech talk right there. Now, let's open up the rest of the um, beat, right? I'm always following my little groove and I'm building my track up in different segments. So transitioning has got to do with what you build up like. There you go. So you can hear, okay, the track is working. Another fail safe is to have your faders mapped in a way that you can turn them on or off. If I want to make a break with an extra sound during the kickoff, OB6 on. And there you go. On the OB6 pitch. back to where I was, like, nice one, I've got reverb on the master, so track 8 on the octa track is my master track on which I have mapped um, reverb, there's different uh, scenes that I can use by holding uh, scene B, when you hold it you see what's happening, I've only got one scene at the moment, but there's a lot of stuff you can, you can even uh, use it as a looper play different stuff, you can record stuff into it. I'm only using it this way right now. So, when I get to um, the different tracks that I want to do, the next sequence page to me is the holiest of pages. It means, you go over there, you go to your menu page, in the and then you'll see here your next sequence page. You play it. Now you see all the different segments that you have chopped your track into so other than how a DJ would work and he plays this one track and it keeps playing you have now different parts now I'm not that far into this live set so I'm still working out what needs to go where right if I was to go to a different track um, I'll probably play it here you see the little line crawling across the top of the screen that's the progression of my track at the moment this is a track that this sequence or pattern consists of eight bars, which means that if I was to play something else, I'll play it here. And so now I'm in a different track. The trick that I'm using, because I'm using these two things different from each other, is that the beats are staying the same, at least for a, a small duration of the time. You see, nothing changed in the beats, but I switched back to my first track. So now I can either just like go in and work it that way. A trick for a transition is also be patient and work it in a way that you have time to think you're on your next move. So the whole thing is structure, right? I'm structuring it like this. So say I was to start my track. I'm getting into the, uh, I'm 
coming into the venue, right? Let's start from scratch, okay? So I'll set everything up. I love this mixer, by the way, because the DM12, uh, the, the pre-faded listening, works only on the monitor mixes. So whatever I send to the room is being sent to the room. So I get to just like, like a DJ mixer, listen to stuff beforehand. So I can make sure that before you hear it, uh, I'm making sure that I hear it first so I can tweak stuff. Uh, there's two sends on there, so you can see the blue sky stream and, and the space echo. The space echo is only here. Uh, taking up a little bit of space, echo, space, echo. Well, anyway, because uh, that's going to be a different uh, delay pedal. If you have a suggestion for a delay pedal, please let me know in this in the segment uh, in the section below, um, the comment section below, because I am looking at something. Uh, the Al Capistan is also um, already making a. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. It might be that, but if you if you got another idea, let me know in the section below. For now, it's a space echo, which I've got like a um, wired up um, wrong, as you can hear, because there's only a delay coming from one side. So if I'm playing my, uh, you can hear it on the left side. So I'm sorting that out, but I just connected it quick fast with this video so you know what's going on. All right. Now, if I'm starting my track, I will start with drums, right? I will probably start with the top loops um, and not so much the kick as the kick is the most dominant uh, uh, communicator in the room so I'm thinking okay let's start with the drum so I'm turning this off starting with the drums opening up the, the, the loop here yep. nice as I explained last week on this video the tuning of the drums is also a very important part because um, you're listening to drums but there's already music information here as you can hear on my track 7 here uh, so this is just hamster wheel material hats Clap, boom, clap, boom, clap. But this is what's making you dance. This is what, where the groove is. This is where the different um, um, elements of the groove of my track, the engine, as you if you will, is embedded. Also, there's always going to be, it's going to pop up on screen. Now, there's samples embedded that I've created in order for this to not be sparse or boring. If you don't like this music, it's going to be boring anyway. But if... Uh, if you know what I'm saying, well, there is um, some sort of a, a sample that I always use. Uh, well, not this one, but it's, it's being made for this purpose. So that this is already giving you a hint like, okay, we're going somewhere. This in itself should work because if my MPC does something weird or I need to restart something, I don't want to rely on things being connected to each other and I all of a sudden have to stop my live set dead in the center because something is not working. I'd like to have that control. Again, that's why I'm using the multi-clock so that I'm safe to use something and restart something if that needs to be done. Okay, by now I see you guys are coming closer. Yeah, I'm just waving to everybody. Come on, make your way to the front of the stage. I'm uh, pretty much going to start. And when you're ready, I can see like, okay, you know what? Let's see. Here we go. One, like, whoa, party time, everybody. <sighs> nice. Okay, at this point, I'm thinking, what is my next move? Yeah, so I'm cool. I'm all, all thinking, um, where do I take it from here? Take it out. As I said, reverb on the master. So make a dramatic break. This reverb is only working on the stereo output, obviously, as the kick is coming from the Q output. As you can make out, there's two uh, cables coming out of the stereo and the Q output is housing one cable as I'm sending out my kick mono to the API, from the API to the desk on channel one. Yeah, cool. And there's two places where I can mute the kick. Here, two, three, bam, and here. So if I'm working in here, I can just go on their hands. Oh, oh, fall over. Or I can just like play it here. Cool. Now that I've got that going, I'm thinking, okay, what is next? First, you need some music, right? So whenever I make a switch, this is a very important thing. Keep this in mind. Whenever I switch something or introduce something, I'm not just stacking stuff. I am gradually moving stuff into the equation. Right, so what I would do first is knowing that this is going to be cool, I will go into the subsequent, I will make sure that the filter is down a little bit, but if I'm going to start this, the subsequent is going to reset itself. So if I'm opening up a filter in a break, if I'm going to go back in, the, where, the way I saved it is what's going to play. So keep that in mind. That's close those faders, 
Let's open up the fader and take out the kick and play the. Here you go. Instant music, nice. Can you hear how the. Now, all of a sudden, this melody is helping the melody I've got on my sample and hold. Um, so that's cool. So now we've got music going. This can remain for a bit. If you have a guitarist or a vocalist or whatever on standby, this would be their cue to go like. And locations in the house. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up as I go along, but you, you get the idea. So, when you see that everybody just gets the gist, you're not opening up any filters yet. That's for the transition later. First, you open up a little bit of that reverb. What you can do is what I've also done is that I had a foot pedal that I connected to the effects so that I can work my way and then I would lean in and open up the reverb and then make a dramatic impact. One, two, one, two, three, with the beat. Nice. Also, I pitched the kick drum up to the pitch of this track because, yeah, again, when I switch to a different track, I want this kick drum to have a, bit, a better impact. So the kick drum is lowered on the, on the next part, which is what you're gonna hear, and then you get more low end, so the second track will take off even more. Okay, as I said, kick out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I know that this is playing as well. And extra melodies. So, this is all coming from the MPC. And the only thing coming from the Octa track is. Nice. Nothing playing on the uh, MPC yet. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Going. By now, I've got all the music for this track now. Embedded on what, where I want to go. Now it's time to play around with the filters, maybe. sequence page and think okay what am I going to do let me take out that sample a whole bit so that I've only got drums because if I switch the music now I don't have any conflicting chords that are playing the same thing play a hi-hat I'm gonna go to my track three and let me explain the way I set this up this row the bottom row is one song or at least four patterns dedicated to building up the song because I don't have to program every move I'm making because I am muting stuff here and opening stuff up, right? So, as you can hear, I have switched. And if you're listening very carefully, obviously the track number seven with the tom is not in the same key anymore, but you're not so much paying attention because what I've played on my next transition pattern, which is the first one here, is that, yeah, that's something hypnotic that is going there. I'll probably take out this too. So now I've taken out the loop, track seven, the one with the tonal information. Because as you can hear, you don't want to be playing this. This is your old song, so you leave it out. So people don't necessarily hear that your track has changed. And what I would do now is say, yeah, play around with that reverb again. Do the same trick. Play something here? No, not yet. Okay, put the kick back in. Nice. Now, this next pattern has got more musical information. I'm going to lower my synthesizer so the, the mini tower is closed. I have not played anything with it. The OB6 is closed, and the subsequent is also closed. So, what you're hearing now is only gonna, is coming from the MPC. This sound that you're hearing is a hype synth coming out of the Akai. Listen. So you can play.
play around with that. I have not mapped it out, but what I would obviously do is map it to a launch control Excel so I can manipulate the synthesizer there. Now it's only acting as a sample and hold kind of vibe or at least as a catalyst to drive the music. So this is the big breakdown to go into the next track, right? So what I'm going to do now is think like, okay, first what I want to do, I'll see how this falls with the crowd. If you guys are liking it, then I'm thinking, okay, kick drum. But the trick now is I can leave this to go and to rest and say, let's go to a different bank and play different beats. Let's see how this is going to work. I can even go like, turn it off, select the bank that I want to do. I'm thinking I'm going to go for a breaks kind of vibe, yeah? So turn this on, one, two, three, and. Oh, nice. So still, I switched now. I successfully transformed and the beats and the music to a new place. Now I'm thinking, okay, what do I want to do? Again, the same trick, reverb. And the crowd is very patient. This is something you can do. You have to get used to where you're going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go. Yeah, nice one. I'll leave that stuff off. So, now we're gonna go to the next pattern. Play. Ah, you didn't expect this to go, huh? Take out the kick. So introduce something. I'm gonna take time to let this grow on you, right? Let's see what else I've got. Now is the theme coming. My subsequent is playing a theme. Very interesting, but I see that the filter knob is all the way to the top. If I'm going to play it now, it's going to jump. So since I've hidden it in the background, let's lower it a bit. That bass note is coming from the Akai, would you believe it? What have I got here? Nice. Alright, take the Akai out. page and play the first sequence. Now you can make a breakdown if you would like. And this is how it works with the different tracks. So you want to go to a different track again. I'm going to take out this sound, take out the kick. You can hear clearly I've built this track around an 80s kind of breakbeat. Okay, now let's go to a different uh, track on the um, MPC, see what it plays. Nice. Okay, play around with the uh, mini tower. One, two, three, four, five, six, kick in. Nice one. See? Again, another vibe, another flow. I 
that obviously now I need to switch my uh, beat around so as this is the second track second row I'll go to my bank too there you go bam and we're back that's how I transition between my tracks um, in steps basically what do I got here You're just doing the way you want to do your stuff. You're handling your business, you know. Take stuff out, put stuff in. Easy peasy. Play around with the bass line again. Two, three, four. You want to make a breakdown? Kick out. One, two, three. All the loops out, just the bass, like so. bit on the loud side but this you can manage on the fly right so in steps nice one so oh, we're on for the next one Woo. 
that is a way let me know how you're doing it let me know if there is a preferred way for you to actually just uh, yeah set that up you know this is how i do it so um let me know uh, if you've got another um idea on how to work that okay now um i've got discord connected to patreon because I'm so proud to say that my community is absolutely growing. My community grows. We're talking synths, we're talking synthesizer, we're talking gas, we're talking uh, modular synthesis, we're talking um, uh, demos. So you can drop your demo and get feedback. You know, you get people to remix your track. You can actually make some music with me. There's a lot of stuff that is actually happening on that Discord. And Discord is the bridge between Patreon. So Patreon is a support thing. You won't be breaking the bank. I'll promise you that. I mean, uh, it's a cool thing, and I'm happy to say that that community is growing. After this video, there is most likely going to be a video chat where we uh, talk and uh, discuss stuff live. So you get to just like uh, talk to me in person as well. So that is something I'm looking forward to. So go and do check that out. Um, another thing I would like to mention is analogcourses.com. Um, because there were a lot of questions even after this video where I do think I explained it lengthy, but still a lot of people ask me like, can you get deeper into this, the matter of, of things? Um, yes, I can. And this month is actually the month that I'm going to complete the whole course. Analogcourses.com, I will upload all the videos this month. I mean, getting deeper into sound design, getting deeper into sound layering, structuring, how to process your stuff, how to look at effects, how to just uh, work your different band members, what to do, what to listen for, because every box, every brand has got their own sort of like sound signature. It's not the same when you walk into this music store and you buy five or six synthesizers and drum computers that you will just like come out, come out of there, guns blazing and everything sounds absolutely amazing. There's a few things you need to take into consideration. Hence analogcourses.com so if you've got more questions than answers if you're interested in getting knowing a little bit more and these videos are really ap appealing to you that might be a one-stop shop there is at this point no videos uploaded yet this is something that the people know there's a small disclaimer on top of the, uh, the page but still i need to explain it to you that i am actually going to upload them this month so and because you have to wait for it that means that there's a discount so you can enroll now for a um, yeah discounted price that's that. The track you heard in the beginning of this video is something you can find on my Bandcamp page. I will stick some music, unreleased stuff, uh, stuff that I do feel confident enough about that you can hear. I will stick that on the Bandcamp page. There's some cool tracks out there as well. So you might want to uh, nose around and see if that's something of your liking right there as well. Now, the Mixer project is something that I'm making with uh, Christian Vossen, which is one of the patrons as well. We have decided, it's going to be inline. We have decided the filter section, the EQ section, not so much going to be a four or three band EQ, it's going to be a filter section, which means high, low, and then, you know, we're looking at dual concentrics, so that might be a cool thing. Inserts on the channels, MIDI club involved. We're actually going to just like go with, um, uh, um, yeah, with a certain sound quality that we want. We're not sure how the form factor is going to be. It needs to be small, because you want to just like bring it with you, or at least not to haul a big ass studio, mono, a studio mixer with you as well, you know? So six, eight uh, channels, maybe we're looking at that. They got the faders we decided on, uh, maybe six mil would be good. You got the uh, uh, 60 mil, you got the 100 mil as well, but how it all pans out and works out is, is the thing, again, also looking at parts. Parts is ridiculous to find at this moment. You know, there are certain parts that you need to just order everything or they'll go obsolete and will just don't return. So it's not the easiest to come up with a, um, uh, a technical thing at the minute, but we're not the only ones suffering for that. So then you know why this <laughs> project is taking a long time to uh, come to fruition. Anyway, now thank you for watching. If you made it this far into the video, you're an absolute superstar. Thank you for being here. 11.2k uh, subscribers is an achievement. So 
thanks keep the vibe alive do spread the word around and uh, share like and you know what i guess that that's that for today you know what i'll catch you next week on another video animal kitchen out Thank you.